Lady Duke Lane in Eugene. Uh, I'm senior minister of First Christian Church here in downtown Eugene, but am here as the president of the board uh, for uh, Opportunity Village. This is a, a very unique program, and, and we think it can be a model for our nation to addressing a, a critical social issue that we all face. As I understand, you're not from Eugene, but I'm sure you're aware of, of uh, the problems facing the homeless. In our community, it's particularly acute right at the moment because uh, we just have seen two recent actions. Uh, one, the eviction of about 150 uh, homeless uh, individuals living in camps, um, on BLM property, ODOT property along the river. At the same time, tomorrow, the Eugene Mission is instituting new rules and has actually reduced the number of people that are gonna be able to stay at the mission. Uh, on top of all of the other you know, situations uh, in our economy, we know that there are more than a thousand people in our community without any shelter of any kind. Um, so this is just a, a drop in the bucket, but we think it provides a, a model for how we as a community can address this growing problem without using public dollars. So our, the only resource we're using from the public is, is the land itself. We're very appreciative of the city, the city council, the city staff for all that they have done in cooperating with us, uh, working together in this collaborative uh, arrangement. I particularly appreciate uh, uh, city staff's uh, note that this uh, will offer a great benefit to our community um, in providing a place uh, for up to 45 individuals to get off the street so they can um, begin to really uh, focus their attention on other needs in their life and, and to get on. We have a couple of those individuals who will give testimony later tonight. Um, so I'm not going to take a lot of time uh, for that. Uh, I would just like to point out the fact that uh, it's very unfortunate that the property was rezoned after the city purchased it uh, because had it still been a trailer zoned for a trailer park, I don't know that we'd have to go through this process. Um, but the site uh, really works very well for this purpose. It's very well contained. Um, it, uh, I think it's just ideal for uh, easy security for us to make sure that we can uh, uh, maintain a good operation. Uh, I refer to this as a gated community for the homeless, which uh, uh, is, you know, the irony of that. It's just incredible, but, but that's what it is. Uh, it will be a controlled community. Only those who are members, guests, invited, you know, volunteers and so forth. It's not a place for everyone. Uh, for this homeless to come and hang out. We still need places like that, but this is, this is not that place. So this will be that place where uh, these 30 to 45 individuals have a decent place to live that's clean, safe, um, so that they can begin to uh, get on with their life. Um, I don't think uh, I need to go over the technical stuff. Uh, we have uh, uh, Bill Randall here, who is the architect who actually did the work on the application. So if there are any technical questions, uh, I will defer uh, to him on that. Um, and Andrew Heben, who is uh, an urban planner who did much of the work in developing uh, this model, he will provide testimony next. So, uh, oh, and let me just say one other thing. The, the One of the unique features of this operation from that's different from some of the similar type of operations in other places is the fact that we have this nonprofit board of community leaders. So there are two other pastors besides myself, uh, several business leaders, uh, community activists uh, uh, who are part of this board. We have the Neighborhood Association, the Train Song Neighborhood Association, who is participating, and the president of the, that association is here tonight to offer his uh, testimony. Uh, so this really is a collaborative effort uh, between uh, various members in the community to try to make uh, uh, you know, a, a real um, difference uh, in this growing problem and to show a way that we can assist people who really do want to help themselves. Um, so we're excited for the opportunity, very thankful to the city uh, for uh, working with us on it. So if you have no other questions, we'll just... Let me just ask you this. You, and, and you may want to have a look at um, staff's memorandum today that modified a couple of the conditions. Whenever there's a recommendation of approval, I want to ask the applicant if you've read the staff report carefully and whether you agree with the conditions of approval and think you can meet them. Yes, absolutely. And we, and we have been working with them now already on these. In fact, we've raised in particular the issue about the solid waste. Uh, one of the principles is since this is temporary use, which the CUP really isn't designed for, but that's what it is, um, and we agreed to that we be out.
out by October. We just didn't want to put in a permanent structure for temporary use, and so we asked the city if there wasn't some other way to do that waste management that wouldn't require us to establish a, a, a permanent structure for that purpose, and they were quite willing to do that. Uh, we're also working on the bicycle issue to try to find a, a way that we can park bicycles on the same principle without having to put in anything that we're going to have to pay to take out uh, 14 months from now. So yes, we're 